Get yourself together, okay? Oh, hey, good morning. We're here at the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, ready for our Daniel Fast experience. We ready? So I would like to ask you to think about this. Remember a few weeks ago when we had a special guest at Wheeler and it took us extra time to get in the building? Oh, we, somebody say, oh, we. Dr. Jill Biden came through and it took a little extra for us to get in the building. Some of us were a little irritated by that because I usually come in and get in my seat by now. But you know what? It was special. And then some folks who were frustrated ended up taking pictures and posting on social media. I saw it. And I remember somebody saying, man, why, send, send Michelle. You don't send somebody. <laughs> send Michelle. We don't mind standing in line if it's Michelle. Okay, so let me ask you this. You know we had to go through a lot to prepare. Y'all, there were snipers on the building. It was all kind of stuff you probably weren't even aware of, right? But let me ask you, what if we got the letter that Michelle was coming? How many of you wouldn't mind? Huh? Let's be real. You wouldn't mind going through a little something if you do. But what, let, me, let me push it. Let me, let, me, let me go better than that. What if you won the opportunity to spend a full 48 hours with Barack and Michelle? No, no, I'm very serious. Do you know what you would have to do to prepare for that? Do you understand you and your family? Probably your neighbors, huh? Vetted, right? They gonna go through everything in your life. <laughs> for you to just spend 48 hours, talk about whatever you want, chill, you make dinner, you know, all that stuff, but you will go through the ringer. How many of y'all are willing to do that? Easily hands went up, right? I'm asking you this question so you will consider that the God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who knit you in your mother's womb, the one who has plans for your life beyond what you can conceive, says, I want to meet with you. And yes, you can get in contact with me and access, have access to me every day, anytime, for any reason. But there is something a little more intimate and special when you commit yourself to prayer and fasting. That gives you some access because you are turning away from the worldly and physical dynamics that consume us. Some of y'all, let's be honest, we think about food a whole lot. Think about the time you spend preparing just to eat cooking a large meal. How many of y'all, you spend hours on Thanksgiving. All the women say, ooh, and some men. But I set this up so that you will remember that the purpose of fasting is not that we have a cosmic genie who just gives us what we want or that we are positioning ourselves to manipulate God. This is a privilege of more intimate, deeper fellowship and friendship. And if we say we would go through a few extra things for somebody who don't even know our name, huh? And we'll come and go and give you one of those generic letters with a stamp signature and you will be happy and frame it, but somebody has stamped their image on your life. I'm trying to help us see why preparing is so worth it. And we come away with so much more when we approach it with the right attitude. So the fact that you are here means you don't need convincing as much as maybe just the motivation when January 12th comes and the office has donuts. And there are people who don't care about you fasting because they're going to go to lunch and they're going to go to Papa Do's or they're going to do some extra stuff. Huh? Or some of you have birthday parties in January anniversaries and whatever you you and God talk about that but I want to motivate you to understand the spiritual the di dynamics and the benefits so as a congregation we're here on the handout as a congregation we will voluntarily deny ourselves of food to strengthen our spiritual disciplines that's the first blank there this is about spiritual dis disciplines not just a diet, not just kind of dropping pounds, and some of that will happen. Yes, praise God. But it really is about spiritual disciplines. 
And I put disciplines as in plural because it's not just one aspect of your life. We will, we will fast. That is a spiritual discipline, but we will pray more. We will be in the word of God, study, meditation, more. We will be in solitude. Sometimes we're just doing too much and too busy. We need to sit down and listen. Huh? So it's the spiritual disciplines, plural. And then sometimes we, we believe, you know, experiencing God on a deeper level, we need to abstain from excessive conversation, media, time-consuming hobbies. All of that is good because some people say, well, I'm going to fast social media. Amen. That might, that, amen. <laughs> I'm going to fast, you know, a whole lot of TV because if you're a binge watcher, you know, all of that is fine. But in essence, spiritual and biblical fasting, first and always, is about altering your diet. In the old times, Old Testament times, when, when there was something that happened at a, at a national level or there was a crisis or some personal grief, have you ever been so overwhelmed that you just lost your appetite? Huh? <laughs> My sister said, never. <laughs> I eat through sunshine and rain, heartache and pain. Come on, somebody. I eat to bless his name. That's my sister. No, Rita, thank you for that. So, so that's the reality. Some people say never. But some of you can relate to being so overwhelmed or being in a situation where you just, listen, I, I don't have, I'm, I'm, and some of that is where the fasting comes from being in such a state that you were desperate enough to meet God and food was not on your mind. So spiritually and intentionally fasting is that I have some purpose in my life. There's something for which I am drawing closer to God and food is not going to be the priority because we need food. Yes. But this idea of intentionally setting ourselves in a position, a posture to humble ourselves, because you know how to humble somebody. One of the first things they do in torture is to take away your food. Huh? You humble people. Even, even God said in Deuteronomy, I tested you in the wilderness. I humbled you. I gave you manna from heaven and all that, but it was to teach you my ways. To teach you what? That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that, listen, this is what we're about to learn, y'all. I don't know about you, but that really, I want to live by his word. I want to know his voice so much that it's just easy for me to catch the clues and the hints. You know what I'm saying? Remember when your mama used to just look at you and you knew what it meant? Remember, I want to be able to be close enough that, that God don't have to bump me upside the head. You know, some of us hard headed. That I can just hear and get the whisper and the hint. And sometimes that means that all of the other things of life that I've been consumed by. I'm disciplining my spirit so that I can be more attuned. Woo. Can we get the document that was shared emailed to us? Amen. Okay, y'all want the handout. Well, praise God. Everybody say, hey, Zoom family. Thank you all for joining us. I believe this is being recorded, so we're going to be able to go back and make sure you get all of it, okay? All right. So this is so we can fast and be disciplined and it is for the spiritual altering our diets for the spiritual um abstaining from food you got it. oh i got the clicker i'm sorry i'm just so excited talking did the animation go through thank you abstaining from food and drink for spiritual purposes this is the essence of fasting so i'm going to go through a few things to help us get our mindset i want to talk about this is what we're going to do we're telling you the why today we're telling you the how, why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and what to do. We're going to get a demonstration, okay? So all of this is happening today. Um, this is the why person. Why? What's your motivation? What are we doing? It's spiritual person, purposes. Let's get our mindset together. We must examine our mindset. On your handout, you say you have here, prepare for fasting by thinking about how God has already been speaking to you and what you may need to change about how you are viewing fasting. If you set your mind to do it, it can be done. Turn to Daniel chapter one. This is the basis of what we do. I'm not going to read all of that, but remember, that's why you have the handout so you can go back. I promise you, if you meditate on these things over the next couple of weeks, it'll help you get your mind right and get that motivation. Chapter one. Now we know that Daniel was taken captive. He is part of the elite and he's in this foreign land. And then the king wants to put a certain diet before them. It's the choice. It's the king stuff. So it probably was real good. 
right? But Daniel and a few of his boys, they, they asked the server, no, nah, we don't want to do this. Here is where I want us to go. That's the, that's the um, Keisha version. Go to verse 7. Daniel chapter 1. Verse six, I'll start there. Among these were some from Judea, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, he called Belshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself. But Daniel what? Some other translation says, set his mind or purposed made up in his mind, purposed in his heart, that he would what? He would not defile himself. Listen, this is a point that I want to make sure we understand and we want to be people of compassion and not, uh, no judgment here. But there were other Jews taken captive and they did eat. Daniel and his boys weren't the only ones taken captive. There were others and they they ate. They seemed like they didn't have any problem with it. But Daniel and his friends said, we, we're not going to do this. It was, it was not that he was intentionally fasting as much. Yes, he was fasting, but it was really like a protest. Listen, y'all, this is why it's so spiritual and it's real. Daniel said, I might be in this thing, but I'm not of it. Just because the world system, the pagan system wants me to bow down and consume everything they're given. I'm not going to defile myself with that. Think about it. It's a whole lot of other Jews that were captive that decided to eat. It's a whole lot of other Christians, a whole lot of wheel of folk. No judgment is just that somewhere, this is why the mindset is important. I'm saying, I'm not going to do it. And Daniel had purpose. It says he purposed in his heart. He purposed. This is why fasting for your mindset usually is most successful when you connect it with purpose. Why are you doing this? Is it just because Pastor Cosby said we're going to do it? Okay, that's not bad. Start there. No judgment. That's a good, that's a good place just to become more disciplined. And but to, Amen. Praise God. Start right there. But what else has God been speaking to you about your life? What are you going into this new year praying about, seeking God about? What is it you need to recover from? in 2022 how is God already developing you and speaking to you that you need to attach purpose and purpose in your heart whatever the world system is saying whatever anybody else is doing I'm not defiling I'm purpose in my heart I'm 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 doing this I'm asking you to pause pray about that attach purpose make sure you're you're hearing from God even as you go into this fast it'll help your mindset because then is I'm not just motivated because I want to try these new recipes and see if I can do it. I'm not just motivated because I got a few fringe friends in my friendship circle and we're holding each other accountable. That's good. You're going to need that. Okay? So do it. But deeper than that, what is God saying? What is God doing? How do I need? Listen, ooh, what's the stuff I've been wrestling with because I have been so attached to the world? I have been dipping and dapping, one foot in, one foot out. I have been wrestling with this in my life, in my marriage, in my home, like whatever it is. But I'm deciding, I'm purposing in my heart. I'm protesting the way that everybody says you're supposed to handle your marriage difficulty. This is how you do it. No, I purpose in my heart, I'm going to do it God's way. This is what. Is it too early? Y'all all right? Okay. So the mindset fasting is most effective when it is engaged with purpose. This is on your handout. These are just a few, a few of the reasons why a person may choose to fast. Uh, but I wanted to give you a few more scriptures. You have plenty there listed, but I wanted to give you a few more scriptures. Let's see. We talked about the mindset of Daniel. Go ahead. It's not, I think I'm too far away from it. All right, those are just a few biblical reasons, but you have some more on your, on your uh, handout. Let's go, it won't let me go to the next one. Okay, I did it, I did, yeah, I did, okay. Um, before we get, let's see how. 
So before we get to methodology, let's look at these passages. Judges 20, you don't have to go there, but remember I said this is why I gave it to you so that you will have something to take back. On your handout, you have Judges chapter 20 and Joel. Those are examples of people fasting for uh, protection or to seek guidance from God. How many need guidance from God about something in your life or some direction? Well, they, they're, they're praying and they put fasting. And just a couple of examples. There's another one that's not on the handout. I want you to just think about Esther told everybody to fast. She was going before the king. They needed some protection. <laughs> she needed protection. God, what do we do in this situation? How do I handle this situation? Put everybody on a fast. Tell everybody to fast. She sure did. <laughs> Next one, Jonah in the first Samuel. I'm going to come back and um, edit that one because I was looking at it to make sure it's for some reason it seems that there is a a typo there but when you read the context all the way it says they fasted over in second samuel chapter one but that was for grief and a return to god jonah you know he was in the big fish he sure did <laughs> repent <laughs> acts chapter 13 and acts chapter 14 when they fasted there it was out of a concern for god's work and how to help others, the needs of others. Just some examples. Another example of that would be Nehemiah. When he learned of how the walls were torn down in his homeland, and he was going to go before the king to ask God's favor. It was for favor, but it was also because he was concerned about the need of his people. And the next one, the first Kings 21, and then in Matthew chapter 4, you see one example of fasting, examples for fasting, there would be to humble yourself and to overcome temptation. And then the last one I included because there might be somebody so blessed, and I'm not saying this to be shady or whatever, salty. I mean this. Sometimes we are in seasons of just being blessed and happy and favored and all is well. And you might think, well, you know, they think, people think about fasting when y'all are in trouble. But sometimes fasting is good just to love on God and worship. And, for, and let me say this to very heady people, heady meaning, you know, thinking, intellectual, sometimes analytic people. Sometimes we, we, we are consistent in Bible study and all of that. But another benefit of fasting might be that you got to get out of your head to your heart. What about worship? What about loving on God? We can study and get all deep and you got a whole lot of Bible trivia and facts and you're all deep in that. But what about, I love you, Lord. You know, adding some depth to your very personal spiritual practice of praise and worship and not in the cathedral. Hello, the personal devotional sweetness of just intimacy with God. I'm not, I don't need to eat today. Uh, your word is better than honey to my lips. In your presence, there really is fullness of joy. My heart, my, as a deer, pants for you, so my soul, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes those are the moments that that might be the need, because if you're addicted to worship only in the cathedral, but God wants to make your place his dwelling place. Amen. Amen. So in the methodology portion, Mrs. Tucker is going to tell you a lot about how to and those things. But I wanted to give you just a couple of, uh, what am I on time? How about how much? Oh, okay. I'm good. Okay. So methodology, here is where I want us to really think about the spiritual side of what she's even going to talk about later. What is the specific type of fast that you were doing? We are doing a Daniel fast. It's called the Daniel fast because of the passage we read. Daniel, this is how he fasted or this how he protested um, and what he ate and what he did. So you get that in Daniel chapter one. But there are other times of your life. It may not be January with Wheeler. It may be September with your spouse. <laughs> Huh? Or beginning of the school year, September with your classmates, right? <laughs> Finals time, whatever that is. What is that time and what is the type of fast that you will um, fast? We are doing 30 days, 31 days, 30 days. Um, I think it was Esther that had three days. There are some other passages in the Bible that have different timelines. And it is because of this. 
There is no prescribed, you have to do it this way. So I, I want to say that so that we are freed and we don't become legalistic and we don't get bound and thinking that, oh my God, I gotta do it this way, I gotta do it. No, there's a whole lot of grace even with this. So we are doing as a congregation all of January, except the first, <laughs> but January is a fast. But like I said, it could be June when you feel like you need to fast. Don't feel like you have to go back to 40 days or 30 days. The Lord may say to you three days, or you may have on your heart as a commitment, five days, two days. It may be one day every month. You see how you, right? Um, somebody remind me to tell y'all something later. Just say, tell, tell her something. <laughs> um, resources and energy to support your dietary goals. Think about these things. Remember, we're getting our mindset. So what will you use? How will you use your time? Because it does take a little more time, depending on what you're making and, and how you're cooking for prep, because you're using fresh things. But there are ways to get around that. But sometimes you, you're not going out to eat as much. So you got some time to be at the house. Huh? How will you use your time? You can't sit up and look at the Food Network. I'm trying to keep it really practical, right? So how will you use your time? And this is where we say it's spiritual discipline. So what about solitude? What about prayer? This is a great opportunity to advance, intensify your prayer life. How about spending more time with that list we have on Sundays? How about spending more time? Go to the prayer wall on the church website every day. It doesn't take five minutes. Just go there and just pray. Think about what you will be doing to add depth. The Bible study, you'll have wonderful studies. Uh, Reverend Roberts will be teaching every Wednesday. I have my YouTube there because I'll be doing some things as well. You have opportunity to feed your soul, feed your spirit more. What will you be doing with your time? If you have a plan going in, most likely it will be much easier and much, yeah, much easier for you to maintain. So what will you do? You might want to write out a plan. You may want to do meal prep planning, but also your spiritual meal planning. Do you have a devotional? Do you have a book? Do you have something that will keep you focused on your purpose, but then even more important than your purpose, opening your spirit to hear from God? Because I don't want us to even idolize our purpose. Does that make sense? Fasting is not about us bending God to us. It's about us leaning into him. It's about me humbling my spirit, opening my spirit, and being postured in a way that I can hear more from the Lord, being more sensitive to the Lord. So those are some practical things you might want to think through to prepare yourself spiritually. And then lastly, I want to deal with the motivation behind it. So you get to January 16th, huh? It's January 16th. What day is that on the week? What day is that? Somebody give me a calendar. That's a Monday. Ooh. So let's go further in because Sunday helped you out. You know, you had some power after worship. So you are right. That carried over to Monday. But by Thursday, Oh, yeah, Thursday, Thursday. Let's go Thursday because the weekend coming too. And your best friend got a birthday party. They ain't studying about no Daniel. Right? What's your motivation? What's going to keep you committed? First and foremost, you prayed about this. You, you prepared yourself. You purposed in your heart. Ooh, there's something greater than my natural hunger. I'm after. I'm after God. There's something deeper going on in my life. I was willing to rearrange my life and everybody around me to meet the Obamas. And this is disciplining me because when I'm stronger in my spirit, it helps me prepare for what's coming in my life. I uh, think about one of those old songs. Somebody can help me with the, but... Um, Yield not to temptation for yielding a sin. Each victory will help you. Some.
dark passions subdue. Look ever to, he will. See, get, get you a good playlist together. Over, over the next couple of weeks, create a playlist. Woo, get you some good stuff that take you in. The stuff that really pulls you in and really helps you to focus. I get you a good playlist. Wake up in the morning with it. Play it during lunchtime. I'm serious. Find, find a Bible app or, or a podcast or something that is of a teaching that sound, <laughs> but feed on all of that. Okay? Because that, that's going to be your motivation for you staying connected to your purpose. Right? But then these are some other things I wanted to add just to help you, hopefully encourage you. Let's go to Genesis chapter two. Our motivation. Why would we continue? Why, what's spiritually behind this? Let's consider what we lose and gain by fasting. In Genesis chapter two, I'm reading verses 15 through 17. It says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Y'all heard that before, huh? Short here. Trying to edit and make it quick, but I want you to I want you to get the, the, the importance of this. How did sin enter the world, sister? Because they chose to eat what was forbidden. Think about this, y'all. They already set up, they already have everything they need. They are as beings, they are already all they need to be. They didn't have to perform to bless God or get approval. They are as in their being. You are already Adam and Eve. You are already pleasing to God. But being deceived and then choosing to eat what was forbidden, they were stripped. Exiled from this wonderful paradise, right? Y'all following me? Some authority was taken from them. I want you to process this because what if, and I heard this long ago from another pastor, it's easily 20 years ago I heard it, but it's always stuck with me because I believe, God, I believe there's some truth to this. If we lost so much by eating what we were not supposed to eat, what if God is saying, I want to restore to you some power and authority and dominion when you learn to abstain. Can y'all hear me? What, what if there was so much we lost in our connection and in our intimacy with God because we craved lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, all of that was in there because we, our hunger, our appetite, our desires were somewhere else. But what if God has said, there's a way for you to be restored. It's in Jesus Christ, but to continue that, to be filled with the spirit, to stay, because the, the filling of the spirit is just one time and forever. Yes, you have Holy Spirit in you, but the Bible says, be ye filled with the spirit as in continuing on and on, because we leak, y'all. We pour out, we leak, we go through. So what if God is saying, this is one of the ways that you can be filled and regain some of the strength we lost as humanity. Because you ate and partook in one original place, Adam, through Adam, we've all sinned and died. But in Christ, we are restored. And what if through this, because Jesus himself fasted, you do know that's how he overcame in the wilderness. He was fasting for 40 days. But he gained, and all of that is a part of what we get to partake of so that we can be restored with our connection and our intimacy with God. Because they, they being Adam and Eve, experienced God. They could just know when he was walking in the cool of the day, y'all. I don't know about you. I want to see God. I want to experience God. I, wanna, I don't want to have to take lightning and thunder and everything else for me to get it. But when we discipline ourselves to be toned in and we resist the natural things that usually take our attention away, we feed on all of that. We fill up on all of that. 
What if God is saying, this is one of the ways that I would restore to you something that was lost way back then. And it still has to do with your diet, your craving, what you eat. So we, same way we lost it, what if we could gain it? I want that to be part of your motivation. What if by turning down the plate and saying no, it's going to tune you in to God? What if, what if saying no and resisting it, you are strengthening yourself to say no to some other fleshly desires? Uh-oh, you fill in the blank. But what if that's a part of why this should be our motivation? Read Isaiah 58 in your time. This is one of the classic bedmark um, uh, benchmark uh, pillar passages through the prophet about what fasting is and how God desires us to fast. Read that please in your time and don't just read quickly over it. Read it and meditate on it because the, the Lord asked through the prophet, is this the kind of fast I want? Y'all say I, you know, I'm praying and y'all don't hear me and God doesn't hear me. But wait a minute, when you fast, you do what you want to do. Is that what I asked of you? There's specific things in that text that God is challenging the people on because they thought fasting was just the ritual and this and, and you, you put on sackcloth and ashes. That was like, you know, you wove around and talk about how hungry you are, girl. I'm, ooh, I'm fasting. No, I'm just being honest. It's not about the hour show. So people can say y'all fast. Oh, we look fasted. No. This is what I really want. Go to Isaiah 58 in your time and, and look at what God really wants. That should be our motivation. Next one, Daniel 1. We read it earlier, but Daniel also fasted in chapter 10. Daniel had a, a dream, a vision. and He needed some interpretation and revelation of it. And so he fasted about it and God answered. What will motivate you? And how did that experience motivate you? Does that experience motivate you to fast? Let's go to Daniel chapter 10. I want to read that and then we'll wrap up. This is real for somebody because there are some spiritual dynamics to this that I don't want you to miss or be naive about or, you know, just remind. Some of you, I know it's a reminder. Daniel chapter 10. I'm not going to read all of it, but verses 1 through 14. This is when it says he had the vision. Verse two says, at that time, Daniel mourned for three weeks, that's 21 days. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotion. So he was ashy and hungry and just, just desperate. But he had a purpose. He needed to see God about something because this troubled him, right? So go there on the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, I'm in verse five now. I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of the finest gold around his waist. His body was like chrysolite, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision and the men with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone gazing at his great vision, at this great vision. I had no strength left he been fasting too, right? So you're fasting, overwhelmed, but he sees this and then go to verse 10. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he, then he continued. Here is what I wanted to get to. Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day, y'all see that? Since the first day that you set your mind, did, what did we start talking about? Getting our minds right, Get, getting our focus, getting our purpose. Being, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself, isn't that another one of the principles? And right, to humble yourself before God, not to humble myself just so I can get what I want, but to see God. Your words were heard and I have come in response, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. I wanted to read that so that you would know that there is spiritual warfare and it is real. 
The prince of perjury is referred to as a prince, but it is the spiritual realm. The mind. Michael is, is considered one of the angels, our angels, usually of warfare, Michael, the fighter. So this angel, this messenger is telling Daniel, since the first day you decided to fast and pray and seek God about this vision, your prayers were heard, but there was some turbulence in the spiritual realm. There was some warfare and conflict because you decided and you set your mind and you were humbling yourself to seek God because this was, this was that important to you. You were desperate to seek God and know God's will. Somebody didn't want you to get some revelation. So I was sent to you, but it took about 21 days. But there was breakthrough. I need y'all to hear me. So that on January 29th, You will remember that when you set your mind to it on day one, when you came and got up early on a cold Saturday, when you set your mind and you had purpose in your heart for your family, for your marriage, for your career, for your finances, for your health, for your peace of mind, for the joy of the Lord to be restored, whatever that is, when you set your mind to it, to humble yourself to see God, there was some, some, some spiritual warfare, but listen, Daniel persevered. This is a part of a Daniel fasting we might not hear about, but I need you to know that there are attacks that come. Everybody and their mama gonna bring you something to eat. People you didn't wanna hear from all year says gonna be blowing up your phone. Hello? You weren't thinking about eating no chicken till you saw all the commercials. Your children gonna decide they wanna do something crazy. Your coworkers are gonna just flip out. You are gonna be faced with some things about you because in the purity of praying and God lifting some of the dross and some of the stuff, he been, get, try, been trying to get your attention for a while, but now you finally listening, being still on enough. You can't run from it anymore. You can't cover it up. You can't self-medicate with food or alcohol or sweets and shopping and. Huh? But if he reveals it, it's because he wants to heal it. And we have to know how to pray in those times. Everything is not the devil, but sometimes it is spiritual warfare. But as we pray and we learn God's voice, then we know what's not God's voice. And then we know how to deal with it. So what's your motivation to stay? Listen, from the day you started, God knows your heart. Don't get into condemnation. Don't get into self-doubt and loathing. You might slip up. I know, I know this. I'm telling you what I know because of experience. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not talking about anybody. This I know right now. I know what it is to just pick up a chip because you're just eating at home. And then you remember, oh, God, dog. I'm serious. You just that easy. Seriously. That's what I'm saying. Get your mind right. Get your household right. You know, some of us who like the snack, you know what it is. You just be, you know, moving on, doing what you got to do. And before you know it, okay, no condemnation. But that's a point to recognize what is in me that I'm snacking all the time. I don't even realize that. Am I really hungry? Is that why I gained that extra weight? Because I'm I'm, I'm saying this, this, it can go somewhere. So I want you to be motivated spiritually to think about what you gain. And then lastly, of course, remember that Jesus provides us even greater motivation. These gospels, the synaptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all give an account of the temptation in the wilderness. And remember that Jesus did encounter spiritual warfare, if you will, the, 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 the resistance of the enemy was possible because he was filled with the word, but he'd also been fasting. So we gain our strength through the word of God, that intimacy with God, that fellowship time, that prayer, that worship time, time to listen. We discipline ourselves. You will find, you will find, you will find that you hear and see things a little bit more clearly. Messages on Sunday probably sound different because God is, yes, speaking to you through the preacher, but there's some tailor-made stuff woven in there that only you're going to pick up because you've been spending time with God. Huh? The solution for whatever it is you've been asking God about on your job, in your family, in your personal life, little bitty things, y'all, 
little bitty, little bitty things become just a little bit more obvious because you're paying attention now. And my prayer is that it will hook you into designing fasting as a part of your lifestyle. When Jesus says in Matthew, when you pray, don't be as a hypocrite, you know, doing all this. When you give, don't, you know, tell everybody what you're doing. And he also says, when you fast. And the when means, he's not saying if, he says when, expecting his followers to do it. Meaning if you keep it as a part of your lifestyle, as, as often and whenever the Lord would lead you, um, I, think it'll, I think it'll change things. I know it will. The last thing I wanted to share with you when I say remind me of something is that um, back in 2020, when I, I finished, I graduated with my um, final degree and the, the pandemic had set on and I didn't get to have a graduation. Remember, we were all in quarantine, lockdown, so we had to do these virtual things and all of that. But I also remember asking God, what's next for my life? What, what, what's next? Major transition. So what, what do you have next? And I was just kind of just open and thinking, you know, I have no reason to really be grounded here in Houston. I can go do something else. I hadn't talked to Pastor Powell necessarily about this part, but I was thinking I was, you know, I might go and just kind of move to the Caribbean, do mission work. I was thinking about, notice I said Caribbean. Um, <laughs> I was, I was thinking about all of that. And I was thinking about I had already talked to my mother about downsizing and moving in with her because I'm going to be living somewhere else. My, I was just like, I'm open. I am open. I also knew that there was something kind of happening in my heart that I needed to be honest and pray through with God about because I want to live the best life. I have a wonderful, wonderful testimony about a full single life, but I realized I do kind of want companionship sometimes. But because I had all of these questions in my life, seriously, all of these questions about what's next, career and job and find, all of this stuff. It was a personal commitment. God, I'm gonna give you the first three days of every month. From it is started in July, August, started August, 2020. And from that time until literally just this last month, with maybe the exception of one month, every month, first three days, I need to fast and pray because I, I got a lot going on. What's, what's happening? What, I need guidance. I met my husband one month later. I didn't know he was going to be the husband, but it sure made me want to fast then because I need to know who is this joker? What's going on? I got a lot riding on this, right? And I want to see God about it. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm serious. Every month. And it blessed me because every month I also learned something different, saw something different. Sometimes about me, sometimes about him, sometimes about other areas of my life. But it made a big, it never failed. I, I, I counted it as this is my special appointment with God. This is my special time that I'm going to guard to make sure I'm tuning in and listening. Because my life is my life. Praise God for a church that wants to bless and help the people of God grow as true disciples get closer to God and learn how to use everything, take advantage of everything that God has given us. I don't have to give you the last of the story. You just know my name is Lakeisha Atiquafio. Come on, everyone. We can do better than that. She is getting us set up for this Daniel Fast journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We ready? We ready? Awesome. So real quickly, we are going, we are going, we are next, we are going to go through just some, what I like to call tenets of fasting, the, um, the food part of the fast. Dr. Atuquafio has just taught us how to tackle and how to um, take part of the spiritual aspects. And now we're going to talk about the um, mechanics of the Daniel Fast, getting through the food part of it. Real quickly, if your primary focus is on food, and not the fast, you're missing the point. That's just what Dr. Um, Dr. Lakeisha just talked about. If your primary focus is on food 
and not the entire journey of the fast, you are missing the point. The Daniel fast is given to us so we can spend less time on what we are eating and more time with the one to whom we are praying. That's it in a nutshell. Secondly, please do not overcomplicate food for the Daniel fast. Just don't do it, resist. Don't overcomplicate, you got four choices. A fruit, a vegetable, a grain, and beans. That's it. You cannot get more simple than that. Don't overcomplicate it. And if you're really feeling good, you can have a combination of them all. That's it. Don't overcomplicate. It's not difficult. We just have to kind of get out of our mind that we want steak, <laughs> but we can't have steak. It's, it's, it's real easy. Just stick, just stick to those four things and you'll be great. And, for, and, and imagine for one month, you no longer have to have that awkward question. What do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? You don't, you don't have to do that. For a whole month of January, you don't have to do that. Okay? Fruit, vegetable, grain, and beans. That's it. It's, it's that simple. Thirdly, all Daniel fast foods are plant-based vegan. But not all plant-based vegan foods are Daniel fast. You have to understand that. This next slide is going to talk about some things you will see in your grocery store that are plant-based, but they are not Daniel fast friendly. Beyond beef, it's not Daniel fast. Leave it at the store. Um, Hellman's vegan mayonnaise. Mm -mm, don't do it. And I'm guilty of it. You know, I've, I've done the Daniel fast every time the church has asked us to do it. And it's a learning process, but don't do it. Um, the just eggs, it is plant-based, but it is not Daniel fast friendly. The morning star sausages, all the things that we're trying to replace in our diet because we can't have meat, don't do it. Just don't do it. It's okay. It's for one month, maybe. And maybe, you know, after um, this month, you decide that there, there are some things about your diet you want to change. But just don't be lured into the pretty packaging and the plant-based and everything that is Daniel Fast is not. Everything that is plant-based, vegan, is not Daniel Fast friendly, okay? Remember that when you go to the grocery store. Next slide, please. Avoid situations if it will be difficult for you to honor your Daniel Fast commitment. You may want to sit out for the January girls' night out. Just, you know, it's, it, you know, if it's going to be difficult for you to sit there and eat green beans while everybody else is having what they're having, just, it's okay. I'll see y'all in February. Just, just remove yourself from it. If you, can't, if you don't think that you can do it, and there are some people that can, but if you are not one of them that can sit in front of someone that's having whatever they want, and here I am eating my Chipotle bowl, it's okay, just stay home, it's all right. So avoid, we want to avoid situations where it will be difficult for us to honor our Daniel Fast commitment. This is a big one. If you don't listen to anything else that I say today, every day you need a plan for what you will eat. You cannot wing the Daniel fast. If you're accustomed to eating what you want, anytime you want, you can't wing this, I promise you. You will be riding out down 288, thinking about chicken wings flying across the, the, the 288 and I promise you, every day you have to have a plan for what you will eat. For a lot of, the, uh, for a lot of us, that may mean um, spending Sunday afternoon after church 
meal prepping for the week. If you know that you're going to have to um, go out um, at some point during the week and have dinner at a restaurant, make sure you do your research and find restaurants that will have food that you can, that you can eat. Okay, so every day you have to have a plan for what you eat. Do not get caught out in these streets <laughs> without a plan. Don't do it. I'm telling you, if you don't listen to anything else, I say do not do it. And I go so far as to, um, you know, I have children at home. I, you know, I work. I live 30 miles from 30 minute drive from home. I spend the weekends ripping and running, running errands. I keep a Daniel Fast emergency kit in my car. I do it. It has some skinny pop in it. It has some crackers in it. It's okay. It has some oranges, those cutie oranges. Make you a Daniel Fast emergency kit. So when you get caught somewhere, you have something and you're starving, you have it readily. Just go to my trunk. What you need? You hungry? Let's go to the trunk, you know? The entire month. This is another one. Your, I hear a lot of people say, well, I can't afford the Daniel Fast. Your ability to afford the Daniel Fast is based on perspective and choices. All of us tend to do the things that we want to do. Maintain the right perspective and make the right choices for your particular situation. And let me give you an example. On average, I spend about $20 a week in Starbucks. I just, I just do it. That's, that's my thing. Um, eating out, I may spend about another, can you go to the next slide for me, Donnell? Thank you. I spend about another $100 just eating out, you know, go out with a girlfriend after work or my son's hungry, you know, before football practice, about $100 a week. My Target runs, my Amazon, you know, that's about another $50 a week, give or take. And so in total, that's about $172 a week that I spend that could be considered. I could leave it. I could take it, you know, but. So the next slide will show you <laughs> what all you can purchase for $116.24. I went and bought eight sweet potatoes, a box of Triscuit crackers, some almond milk, hummus, black bean patties, frozen strawberries, pineapples, Brussels sprouts, bananas, apples, pears, avocados, spaghetti squash, spinach, carrots, grapes, onions, brown rice, black beans, pasta, pasta sauce, almonds, skinny pop, and corn shells. All of that was left. I'm saving money by doing the Daniel Fast at this point. So keep the right perspective make the right choices. We can do this. Next. Oh, the simpler, this is another thing. The simpler your Daniel Fast meals are, the less expensive your grocery bill will be. The simpler your Daniel Fast meals are, the less expensive. Daniel Fast used to be real expensive for me. Why? Because I was spending $10 on a package of Beyond Beef. I was, you know, trying to do all those things to try and replace, you know, the typical diet. That stuff is expensive. They come up with all this stuff and it is expensive. And it's not Daniel Fast. <laughs> Number seven, Preparing, Dan, you will need to know that preparing Daniel Fast meals can be time consuming, but there are some things to help you out. For the first three years, I chopped every onion, I chopped every piece of garlic, um, I chopped my spinach, I chopped the salad. Then one year I got smart and bought a fruit food processor. And within two button pushes, everything was chopped. It makes it easier. And then if you meal prep on Sunday, just bag it and put it in the, in the freezer for, for later on. If, you're, if you know you're gonna eat something with brown rice, 
several times a week, just make you a big pot of it. Put it in the refrigerator. Do those things that will help your weekly meal preparation a lot easier. I usually do it on Sunday. The next thing is you must read the labels. In the grocery store, you can't do, if, you're, if this is your first time doing the Daniel fast, you can't run in, run out, and this, just think you're about to grab something off the um, shelf and that is gonna be Daniel fast. You would not believe how many, food has, how, many, how many foods have sugar in them. You would not believe how many of the foods that we regularly eat have preservatives in them. Those things that you can't pronounce, you would not believe it. So you do have to spend, you have to invest some time reading the backs of labels. It is time consuming. So don't go on a day that, you know, you only have 15 minutes to get in and out of the grocery store. Just spend some time. And then once you get the hang of it, then you'll immediately know what you can um, go to on the shelf so that your grocery store trips are quicker. So let's get into it. Foods that I can eat on the Daniel fast. All vegetables, all of them. Anyone you want. There are, a, there are an endless number of vegetables you can have. You, they can be bagged, they can be frozen, they can be fresh. Um, if you get, um, a lot of us cook with vegetable broth instead of water, gives it some flavor. Just make sure it does not have sugar in it. That goes back to my point. You have to read the labels. Don't just assume that because it's vegetable based that it doesn't have something in it that you should not have on the Daniel fast. It can be canned as long as, or the, as, long as there are no preservatives in it, no sugar, you're good, okay? All vegetables. Yes, sir. We'll get to it. All fruits. You can have any one of them that you would like. They can be fresh, they can be frozen, they can be canned. Again, the same thing applies. As long as they do not have um, added sugar in them or all of that other gunk in them, you're good to go. Um, dates, that's a, that can, um, th those are really good, um, especially with some peanut butter. It's a snack, especially if you're, you're wanting a sweet tooth, if you have a sweet tooth. Um, no, it has to, it can't have sugar in it. A lot of, a lot of um, peanut butters have sugar in it. Um, you're going to look for something that says raw peanut butter, raw almond butter. Those typically will not have sugar in them. So just be mindful of that. So all nuts, all seeds are good, all fruits, all vegetables. All whole grains, popcorn, skinny pop. I live, I probably buy cases of this during a Daniel fast. They go in my emergency kit. If you're ever out of Skinny Pop, come see me. Uh, Trisket, these are also, they're Daniel fast friendly. We have pretzels, brown rice, whole wheat pasta. Any of these are good, whole wheat pasta. Uh, here's some tortilla chips. They say baked. If, they're, if they do not say baked, you have to assume that they're fried. Frying is a no-no, okay? Those are our whole grains. All legumes, any bean, doesn't matter which one. Um, they can be canned, they can be dry beans. Your good quality oils, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, um, olive oil, any of your good quality oils, are also permissible on the Daniel fast. Again, not to deep fry. We don't deep fry on the Daniel fast. We, we pan saute, <laughs> but we do not deep fry. <laughs> the only drink that is allowed on the Daniel fast is water. Everybody say water. No, that, no you cannot have tea, sir. No, sir. Water. The only food, only, only thing that you can drink on the Daniel fast is water. That's it. 
And then the other things are unsweetened almond milk, coconut milk, rice milk, your herbs, your salts. Again, make sure that you look, there are a lot of spices that have sugar in them. So again, I'm going back to my point, read the label, don't just assume. You can have sparkling water, thank you for that. You cannot have flavored water unless you buy one of those pitchers where you can put your strawberry. In. Well, no, you can't even do that, just water. Just water, just drink you some water. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sparkling water. Okay, spark, no, you cannot. You can, because you can't have carbonated drinks. Thank you for that, ma'am. Just drink you some good old fashioned water. Yes, sir. Hmm. If you do it, yes, but don't go to H-E-B and buy flavored water. Yes, ma'am. Knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. As long as you're doing it. Oh, I'm sorry. She was asking if you cut up some cucumbers and put it in your water, is that okay? Sure it is. You can have vegetables, you can have water, you can have cucumber water. Yes, ma'am. This, that's a great question. Here's a point of clarification. Her question was, what about juicing? If you are thirsty and you want something to drink, you need to drink water, okay? But juicing is allowable, but just not in the place of water. So if you're thirsty, if you're dehydrated, you need to drink you some water, but don't go, don't use your smoothie as a replacement for your water. Don't sit down with, you know, a full plate of vegetables and a smoothie to wash it down. Drink you some water. Yes, ma'am. You should absolutely take whatever um, uh, medications, vitamins that you and your doctor have told you to take, keep taking them. Don't tell your doctor, I can't take my, my medicine because it ain't on the Daniel fast. Mm -mm. No, we're not doing that. Whatever your doctor told you to take, continue to take it. No, ma'am. I would say continue to take your vitamins. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. As long as long as I, I did pick up some um, chickpea pastas the other day, and there are ingredients that are not allowable on the Daniel fast. Her question was, is chickpea pasta okay? Yes, it is. As long as its ingredients do not um, go against what is prescribed in the, during the Daniel fast. Again, turn, turn it over, look at the ingredients, make sure that they fall within this category of things to enjoy, and then you're good. Things to avoid. Again, we're not making this difficult, right? You can't have meat. You, you just can't have meat. You cannot have dairy. You cannot have any sweeteners, say no sweeteners. That means syrup, molasses, um, honey. It means stevia. It also means agave. No sweeteners are allowed on the Daniel fast. No bread. If it has yeast or leavening in it, you can't have it. I haven't found a bread yet. Trust me. I, look, I tried. <laughs> I spent two hours at the grocery store looking for some bread that does not have yeast or leavening in it. It doesn't, I don't, I couldn't find it. Yes, sir. Ezekiel bread, it has yeast in it. Mm -hmm. 
It has leavening agents in it. I told you I tried. <laughs> I tried. Um, all processed and refined food. No white, no white rice, no, no white flour. If it has artificial flavorings in it, chemicals, food additives, we want to stay away from those. Again, no deep fried foods. Your bag of potato chips is not Daniel Fast Friendly because it's a potato. Because you, we have to assume if it wasn't, if it doesn't say baked, that it was fried. Baked Lay's have additives in it that do not go along with the Daniel Fast. The only um, chip, or one of the only chips that I've been able to successfully find are these baked Tostitos. It's a corn chip. Mm -hmm. And then um, all beverages. Everyone say all beverages. Okay, we know what that means, all of them. Water only, water only. Except for communion wine on first Sunday. That's it. We can have communion wine on first Sunday. Next week, we will also, when we publish the official Daniel Fast Guide, there is also a quick reference list. You may want, after the presentation, you may want to come up and just kind of take a browse, get your phone. We did some of the heavy lifting for you and um, purchased some of the items that are major brands. You can find them in the stores. Um, the guide will have what, which store they're located at, um, but things that are Daniel Fast friendly. Uh, there's some pretzels at HEB that are Daniel Fast friendly. Um, there is some hummus that you can find. Most, most of the hummuses have additives in it, citric acid, that kind of thing. This is a Daniel Fast friendly um, hummus. Those are Reverend, when Reverend Barnett um, talked about snacking, these are some of your snacks. These are some things that just kind of make it a little easier to get until you get home and can make your Daniel Fast meal. There's some dips. There is a Ezekiel um, tortilla that is on the Daniel Fast. Okay. So when you get, um, when you have an opportunity, just come up here, take some pictures. Um, there's a brand of tomato sauce. You can just go to the grocery store, look for this brand of tomato sauce, but you have to make sure it's the correct. Um, some of them have sugar, some of them don't. Again, just glance at those ingredients, but you know that all of these have been vetted and they are um, good for the Daniel Fast. These Lara bars, that's another one that is really good for the Daniel Fast for you know a snack, get hungry, but just um, take a look when you can. Uh, let's see. Let's get back to our slide. Yes, ma'am. A local juicing company? Yeah. Because I use a local single that that delivers to your house mm -hmm. that, that don't have sugar. Okay. Like uh, the, the fruits, like the lemon, lime, and lime. Again, if it's a vegetable and it can be juiced, you can have it. I don't, I don't, I don't. Oh, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Question was, can you go to a company? and purchase juiced items. On our Daniel Fast Guide, there is one of the, one of the restaurants that we recommend is um, a juicing um, restaurant where you can go and get a juice. It's totally fine, but the only thing that you can drink for thirst is One of the other things that you will want to do is to give your pot body time to adjust to the restrictions of the Daniel Fast. Excuse me. Those extra bathroom breaks, you'll be drinking a lot of water. 
headaches from caffeine withdrawal. That's a real, that's a real thing. Sugar withdrawal. That's a real thing. Just know it'll get better. As the days go on, the headaches will subside. But just, just know, if you can't figure out why you have a headache, that may be why. Yes, any medication. And they have vegetables, yes. The last thing I would ask you to do is to find or create your Daniel Fast community. This experience, this journey, is much better in community when you're doing it with someone, someone that you can call, someone you can pray with. So find someone that you can take this journey of the Daniel Fast with, pray with them, ask them to pray for you, vice versa. Um, swap your recipes, it's totally okay. We have a, um, there's a um, Facebook page that one of our members hosts and there's a, you know, wonderful array of recipes and things that you can do, think, places that you can go just to kind of get some ideas of what to do. It's okay, it's better to do this in community. I think it's called Wheeler Avenue, Daniel Fast, pardon? W-A-B-C, Daniel Fast. It, she's had it for years. Yes, mm-hmm. Yes, it's on the guide, mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure I will have to ask our team if, if that's still going to be available and, our, and, and on our website. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Wheeler ABC Daniel Fast Support Group. I'd also like you all to take a picture of this QR code that will allow you to register for the Wheeler Avenue Daniel Fast Flock Note Group. We'll be sending out things that way. Scan the QR code, register for the Wheeler Avenue Daniel Fast Flock Note. We'll be sending out information there. Um, so please everyone join that. Any additional questions? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's in it. And even, even if you go to the, um, the website, they don't list their ingredients for it. I would probably shy away from it. I mean, unless you're feeling froggy, but you know, I wouldn't do it just because I don't know what's in it, you know? The question was, um, Chipotle offers a vegan um, meat called sofritas. It is so soy based. Um, tofu in and of itself is Daniel Fast friendly, but we don't know if the sauce that they use has sugar in it or, you know, so. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right, so you can go to Chipotle and get um, brown rice, uh, the beans, um, the guacamole and vegetables and lettuce and corn. Mm -hmm. You, of course you can't do the burrito because the tortilla is, is, is not Ezekiel bread. Um, <laughs> and you can't have the dressings either, yeah. This is probably one of the few dressings that I found that is Daniel Fast friendly. It is the Newman's own classic oil and vinegar. Mm-hmm. 
You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Any time restrictions? No, ma'am. Mm -mm, no, no. Her question was, are there any time restrictions to this fast? I thought I saw another hand. Yes, ma'am. Tech team. Guest at Wheeler. Guest at Wheeler, the G and the W are uppercase. The, the um, password for Wheeler's internet. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so let me tell you something. I've done the, the Daniel fast for several years, right? And I have a shelf in my pantry that's Daniel fast. Why is it that people that aren't on the Daniel fast always want your snacks? You know, um, I have a small child. Um, I'm not doing the Daniel fast with him. Uh, I don't have the bandwidth, you know, but there are some things that I can do with him. We're not in the month of January. He doesn't know it yet. So y'all don't tell him. We're not doing fast food in the month of January. Um, whatever um, vegetables I prepare for me to eat, he'll have those vegetables. I may make him a piece of chicken, but those are the kinds of things that we'll do um, if you have young, that, those are some of the things that you could do if you have younger children. If um, my husband has not always done the Daniel fast um, and I'm just on it alone and it's okay. The question was, what if you're in a household and you're the only one doing the Daniel fast? Yeah, you pray, but it can be done by yourself. I am totally unfazed about all the other, you know, foods and, you know, that they may be doing while they're eating chicken wings on Friday and I'm eating a bowl of rice and beans, but it's okay. You know, you pray through it, you move on because it was my personal choice of what I wanted to do. So it can be done. Yes, ma'am. There is no salt restriction. Any other questions? Our bookstore does have books. Um, they have um, uh, culinary books for um, Daniel Fast friendly ideas. So feel free to stop by there and do some shopping. Was there, did I see a hand over here? Yes, sir. The recording, the PowerPoints, the handout will all be emailed out to you. And if you join that flock note group, they'll be there too, okay? All right. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Probably um, just directing you to the website. If we put them up, they would be on our website. Mm -hmm. And I saw one, uh, one last question over here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no. Because, because her question was, can she eat everything at Mo Better Blues? Going back to my statement, all plant, all vegan food is plant-based, but not all plant-based food is Daniel Fast friendly. But what chef is preparing today is absolutely Daniel Fast approved. And thank you for that segue. Next, we have Chef Lindsay, owner, proprietor, and chef at Mo Better Brews right here in Third Ward and one of our own. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Can you hear me? Good morning. Can y'all hear me? 
Oh man, what a good segue. Whoever that did, whoever did that, I appreciate that plug. But everything that we cook at Mo Better Brews is not Daniel Fast ready or approved. And uh, but the good thing about it is we will have a Daniel Fast menu just for Mo Better Brew. I mean, just for uh, the Daniel Fast. All right. And so everybody will be able to enjoy something. So uh, when um, when they all approach me about you know doing a demo and uh, and cooking and sh and sharing a little bit about vegan and doing some Daniel Fast friendly uh, recipes and items, I was like, you know what, uh, you know the Daniel Fast has really changed over the years because in the beginning, you know, uh, I think man, maybe like twelve years ago. It was like, yeah, morning star, morning star, eat morning star. You know, you get the meat crumbles and make all of the hopping John and all of the stuff that we thought was, you know, the friendliest. But uh, now we realize uh, they kind of made it too easy and they put all these extra preservatives in it. And, and the stuff actually wasn't vegan or uh, actually wasn't, you know, Daniel Fast friendly. Um, so today uh, I got a treat for y'all. So uh, we're in Houston, right? So uh, pretty much everything we do is pretty much Tex-Mex. Everybody love tacos. Who don't like a taco in Houston, right? <laughs> so uh, we'll be doing tacos. And so with the tacos that we'll be doing, uh, we'll be using mushrooms. So when I was in there earlier and I was setting up, uh, some ladies were like, uh, I don't even know what kind of mushrooms to eat. <laughs> I don't even like the texture of mushroom. I'm just like, and so I overheard them and I'm, I, sometimes I, I, I get beside myself and I, when I hear stuff, I'm like, you know what, let me go talk to her for a second. And so I say, well, ma'am, you say you don't like mushrooms? No, I can't stand them. I say, well, I think we got some mushrooms that, that you know, you would enjoy and that we can make uh, delicious. And, and Vic, she's like, well, what kind is it? It's exotic. I don't know what to, what, where to get it from or what to do. I said, hold your horses. I got some stuff for you. All right. So, um, man, all, all the things that they were talking about today were really like spot on in terms of uh, how we eat, what we eat, what kind of things we eat and what we think are actually vegan, but they end up having milk in it. They end up having some type of hidden uh, egg product. And one of the things that I always see is uh, whey. You ever looked, read a, a product, like a, the ingredients and seen like whey? Whey is just a milk derivative, right? So basically you're still getting the milk and you're still getting all that stuff. And honestly, that milk ain't good for our stomachs anyway, right? So with the tacos today, this right here is called uh, an oyster mushroom, all right? So I just come up so y'all can see that. It's, you know, it's a real funny looking situation, right? So it's far from the button mushrooms that y'all used to. It's far from uh, the creminis or the portobellas that are really thick and um, they kind of chewy sometimes, right? So this one right here is kind of flaky in texture. Uh, if you fry it, it tastes like chicken, but we can't eat fried on Daniel's fast, right? <laughs> So, so y'all wait till after the Daniel's fast, and then y'all can try more bitter brews, and then y'all can get these, you know, in a different way. <laughs> but today, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna show y'all um, one way to prepare, but I'm also gonna talk about a couple other ways that we can prepare these things and make them uh, taste good for y'all. So these right here, uh, it's a blue oyster mushroom. It's like a flaky leaf, uh, flowery mushroom. So what I do, I like to mince these up or chop them up really well. So once you chop these up and you start to cook them down, you really can't tell what it is. So, it, so it, it resembles meat or taco crumbles, or if you want like a, a fajita, you know, you can cut them in strips and people that are a little bit more um, texture uh, tolerable, you know, because sometimes the texture of mushrooms throw people off, right? Uh, and so somebody that, who, who don't like mushrooms here? And why don't you like mushrooms? The texture, all right. So we're gonna make sure we, we uh, bust the, uh, the myth on that texture thing, all right? So these right here, you mince them up real well, you cook them down, and they the texture actually is not off-putting, it's not chewy. And this one right here is a, what's called a lion's mane. So the lion's mane, it comes in a, a like a head, uh, and it looks like an actual lion lion's mane, right? Uh, but the properties of, the, of these mushrooms uh, is good for brain health, it's good for uh, being sharp. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it has so many other benefits, some people, they steep it down and they make a tea out of it. Uh, some people, they, um, we, we can, if we fry this, it tastes like fish. <laughs> but we're not going to fry it, right? So, <laughs> so uh, but, um, but the treat that we do have, though, if you break it down, it flakes off just like uh, a 
lump crab, right? So if you flake that off, it looks like, like lump crab. You see that? So if you flake it off, so what we, you thought it was cauliflower? No, yeah, yeah, this is a, a mushroom. So you see the flakes in it? See the texture? So it, it has to, yes, ma'am. So I'm, I'm gonna get to that. So we have a table in the back, so you will be able to purchase these, these mushrooms if y'all want them today. Uh, so you can try some of these things out leading up to your dance fast, so you kind of already got a plan going into it, okay? And so we sell them about a half pound and a pound. Um, but uh, again, it, it's hard to find them. So we, we get them from a wholesale, uh, like a, a private grower here, and then we break them down, and sometimes we, we use them for our restaurant, but we also uh, distribute them to people that want to get them retail, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, I've never air fried them, but the air fry is a, a mysterious and wonderful thing, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, you can, you can, I'm pretty sure you can, but, uh, it just all depends on what kind of texture you might get from that. Okay. Um, and so with these right here today, we're going to have, we actually prepared uh gumbo and y'all probably like, how you make gumbo with no meat, no sausage, no shrimp, none of this other stuff. Right. So with our gumbo, we break our gumbo down just like anybody would make gumbo, right? So how do you make gumbo? With a roux. So it's Daniel Fast Friendly. So we used a, a, a wheat uh, flour. So we made our roux with a wheat flour. Uh, we did our trinity. What's the trinity? That's food, right? That's food. And so for us to get that seafood X S like taste, we added um, what's called nori flakes nor or nori sheets. Everybody familiar with seaweed? All right, so seaweed has very good properties as well, very healthy for you. It's clean, so it's uh, it's basically called a sea vegetable, right? Uh, and sea vegetables have so many different minerals that are beneficial to our body, right? But for us, in terms of taste buds, it gives us that seafood flavor without giving us the, the seafood, the actual seafood or the meat of the, those sea animals, right? Um, and so um, we did a lump crab gumbo, right? And so we served it with uh, brown rice. We sauteed these uh, lion's mane mushrooms. Um, with a little bit of nori uh, flakes, um, a little bit of Cajun seasoning, and it tastes amazing. You put it over the top of your gumbo and get what, guess what you got? Lump crab gumbo. All right. Okay, so, ma'am, um, so um, we can provide the recipe, but we don't have it today. Uh, but um, once you stay plugged in with uh, some of the information that we're going to give you out today, then you'll be able to, to uh, reach back and um, get some of these recipes. Uh, you'll be able to get some of these items as well. Um, because we'll put it on the screen in a little bit. So we will be doing uh, Daniel Faz menu uh, items like a grab and go. So we'll do it weekly. So it'll change out. So we'll change with you guys. And so you'll be able to put in a pre-order or you'll be able to go in and pick up the grab and go. But the grab and go will be uh, first come, first serve. Uh, if you miss the uh, the call-in window, then you'll be able to go ahead and, and pick it up like that. Okay. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, cooking my dishes for you guys. Right. Okay, so we're going to start the uh, the mushroom, uh, I don't want to call it mushroom tacos because y'all probably going to be like, this mushroom taco. All right. <laughs> so uh, I brought my cook station in here for you guys. And so uh, we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called uh, Feed My Muse. My Muse is my lovely wife, Chastity Lindsay. She's over in the crowd with my boys somewhere. Uh, my son was the one making all the noise. There she go over there in the corner. Uh, my son was the one making all the noise earlier, and uh, but he's uh, two years old. Uh, his name is Kai, and then uh, my other son is seven. His name is Chase. Uh, they wanted to come out and see Daddy uh, talk in front of people today. All right. Uh, and so um, with the mushrooms, so we start off by mincing these mushrooms, right? So basically, uh, and we also want to make sure we take our onions. So we do onions, bell peppers. So with this right here, I got onions, uh, cilantro. And for me, that's going to work fine just for this demo. And then, um, so with these mushrooms, so you can see some stuff here. And then also the, the, the thing that's going to be your best friend is seasonings. Seasoning, seasoning, seasoning. So just because you're on a dang fast don't mean you can't have seasoning in your food. I've seen salt up there. Salt is important, but salt is not the focal point because at the end of the day, salt also has a whole lot of adverse effects on our body that we really don't need, especially if we, um, we're eating a cleaner diet um, with the Danes fast. So, so with these, we're just going to basically take a quick chop and mince while we have our onions cooking. And these mushrooms, I mean, they pretty much do whatever you want them to do. 
I guarantee you, like you won't be uh, you won't be disappointed in any type of preparation that these mushrooms allow. And uh, again, this is olive oil. Uh, it's I think it's one of the prescribed uh, choice oils and in the uh, thing there. Um, and um, I was back there taking a few notes because um, sometimes, um, you know, when you're talking to a large crowd of people and everybody has like different perceptions of what Daniel Fast used to be or how they used to do the Daniel Fast and you realize, oh, I've been doing it kind of wrong, you know what I mean? And not necessarily wrong, but the biggest thing is um, I think society has kind of made it a little too easy uh, now and then they, they say, okay, well, all these things are plant-based, but they also have all these other little secret things in it that, that also, you know, are not on par with what we're doing for this month of fasting. All right. Um, and so I like to, while I'm talking, sometimes I can get lost in this food. So I want to also be able to answer any questions uh, that you guys have. And I know y'all have a lot of them. And so as we go, if y'all have questions, please just raise your hand and I can start answering questions while I cook as well. Okay. Um, so the other thing is, who likes chicken out here, right? Who likes chicken? Okay, so somebody tell me, what does chicken taste like before you put uh, any seasoning on it? Kind of bland. No, no, tell the truth. It don't taste like nothing. It don't taste like nothing. So the fact that chicken tastes like nothing whenever you have any seasonings or, or no herbs on it, that tells you where your flavor is actually coming from, right? It's coming from your onions, your bell peppers, all, yeah, all of your vegetables. It's coming from your seasonings. It's coming from the, your herbs, all of the herbs that you put in there. You can do dry or fresh. Uh, it really doesn't matter, but go ahead. Can you go over making soups from scratch with vegetables, please? Soup's the easiest one. Soup's the easiest one, because guess what? The soups, soups is basically water and vegetables. So what's vegetable stock? Water and vegetables. What's a uh, chicken stock? Exactly. So you add a little salt. Again, you got to make sure you read vegetables. Uh, if you do your own, um, you, if you buy vegetable stock, because sometimes they have uh, different ingredients in it, like your sugars or just some other preservative that you really don't need. So me personally, I make my stocks, uh, you know, at home or at the restaurant and it comes out fine. I put in what I want, when I want, and I take all the other trash and I leave it out of my dish, right? And so when you do that, uh, you're able to, to really get a clean and consistent soup or stew or however you want to call it. And it is it's tasty and delicious. I guarantee you. You had a question? Yes. My question is, can you turn your um, seasoning bottles around so we can oh, see sure, the sure, name sure. of the label? So I have some uh, <laughs> smoked paprika. And, and guess what? Fiesta has a, uh, I like to go to Fiesta because uh, they have a, a really good international aisle. And I was going to ask you that next. Is it okay to buy your seasoning from the bulk? Um, the section in the grocery stores? Absolutely. Where you can, okay. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, you know, these Thank are here, they, I've been, I've been uh, weighing these seasonings out, but uh, smoked paprika is one of the things that I like to do to add extra flavor. So anything that's smoked also gives you a, a, another layer of flavor. So I add just a little bit, maybe a half a teaspoon in this little small thing here of uh, smoked paprika. Then we have, uh, this is cinnamon, so it's wrong. So this is a uh, cumin, right? So uh, cumin, Chili powder. Hmm? You, you eat chili beans? All right. So if you eat chili beans, guess what's in your chili beans? Cumin. All right. So cumin. So you got cumin in your chili beans. You got um, chili powder in your chili beans. And of course, you got a little bit of salt. And another thing that uh, that is a secret that I like to use is uh, coconut uh, aminos, right? Uh, you can also use soy sauce. Sometimes soy sauce may be a little bit uh, on the salty side for some people. Uh, coconut aminos is a lot more, uh, a lot less processed than the soy sauce, um, but it also still gives you great flavor and it adds a little bit of depth in there. So basically with these uh, mushrooms, you also, the things that make food food is the texture. Uh, first, what it looks like, uh, the texture. Uh, and then, um, you know, it's the taste. The taste is always pretty much last, right? Because or the, the, it's in between texture. <laughs> so if it tastes good and it got pretty decent texture, you can, you can deal with that, right? But if it, if it don't look good, you don't want to touch it, all right? So what you're doing is, what I'm doing here is I'm making this mushroom actually look and taste and smell. I don't know if y'all can smell that yet. <laughs> taste, look, and smell like uh, 
taco meat. You know what I'm saying? All fajita taco. So I hit my skillet with a little bit of my aminos. The aminos give it the color along with the uh, smoked paprika. And then also I'm going to hit it with a little bit of salt. I had another question back there. Hi, can you talk about storing the mushrooms? Like how long you can keep them and if you know if they're good or bad or not? Say it again. I can hear you, you talk about storing the mushrooms, how long you can keep them, if you know they're good or bad or not? Uh, so the mushroom, just like anything that, um, it's not necessarily an expiration date on it, right? Or uh, just like when you buy fruit from a produce stand, you don't really have an expiration date on that fruit, right? So what you do is you go by smell, you go by texture, um, if your mushroom has some slime on it, you know that you didn't have it in there too long and you probably should have cooked it the other day. However, sometimes, <laughs> however, sometimes you can, you know, sometimes it's just surface, right? So it's not everything that looks bad is not always bad. Now, if it has a, a really a, a rank and pungent smell, you know that you might want to avoid that because you don't want to be sick. Right. Um, but if it has any types of uh, any type of mold, any type of uh, serious discoloration, um, they might get a little darker because they've been sitting in there and uh, the ox oxidation uh, process is kind of taking place a little bit. But for the most part, you want to just go by like what it smells like um, and then, um, you know, what it feels like. Can you freeze them? If you freeze them, then um, it's pretty much once you throw them out, they're going to be withered down. And, they, you know, it just kind of depends on what you want to use them for. Right. So if you want to use them for, you know, putting them in a soup, you can slice them up and put them in there because guess what? You're going to put them in that soup anyway when you get done. But I wouldn't advise uh, freezing them. I would advise using them as freshly as possible. All right. Um, any other questions? Go ahead. So I see you're using the coconut aminos. Mm -hmm. um, I've only used it in like Asian dishes. So what other dishes can you use the coconut aminos? You can. I use coconut aminos uh, to make um, a, a modern rendition of oxtail stew. So basically what you want to do is you, you get that dark, rich flavor, you let it cook down. And so you really just add in a, a layer of uh, richness to the food that you, you, you're cooking with. Right. Um, and so basically you can use it. It's, it's way it's way more versatile than just an Asian dish. Uh, anything that, you, that has a stew like or beef like quality, uh, you can use that for. Um, you know, if you're looking to replace that with anything, you can use it that way in terms of like a beef or like a, the richness that beef would probably give you. All right. I have a question. Will the recipes you be sharing have an Instapot version so that we can use the Instapot? <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I really don't do Instapot. Um, but uh, my wife, she loves to go ahead and set it and forget it. And then we got a delicious meal waiting for us when we get home. Um, but, um, and then, you know, all her ripping and running, like th those are easy things that she can create, um, to, to be able to like still have her time and also, uh, you know, be able to have a meal ready. So when you do stews, so what we talked about earlier, like all of the thickening agents, you can also use uh, potatoes to thicken your stew or your soup. And so when you add that, it'll add texture. So it's not just a loose soup. Uh, it'll be more of a thick and hearty soup. You can add a little bit of almond milk, add a little bit of uh, soy milk to your soup or to your, uh, your potato uh, dish. And it'll like thicken it up and stew it up a little bit and it'll make it a lot better. I'm going to pass this around so y'all can kind of see what it looks like now since we can't really get in there. All right. So like the color that we got on there, the richness, y'all can y'all smell it? Okay. And so uh, all of those things are things that like just being able to take this, this mushroom and transform it into something different, uh, transform it into something that we really, you know, that you want. You want a taco, right? You don't want to just eat a mushroom, you know, plain. Like you want something that's something you want to see? Come on. <laughs> all right. Now that picture may not help you. Is it going to help you? All right. So uh, I think she's ready to taste too. So uh, so this this is almost done. And again, I want to pick something that because uh, I know my time will be limited. Uh, I want to pick something that I will be able to to uh, show everybody something quick, easy. But um, it's an easy situation. With the Daniels fast, you want to be able to have time. And they say food is not the focal point, right? But you also want to have some bit of, you don't want to just put yourself all the way out there. You want to have some bit of a relief when you eat the food that you're eating, but also making it sacrifice, right? So you want to have time for prayer. You want to have time, you know, to spend along with the Lord. You want to have all these, 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 these time compartmentalized things along with work along with the regular things you're doing, the kids, if you got kids, the games and all that other stuff, you want to be able to come and have something quick, 
easy and that everybody can enjoy. And these tacos is one of the things that I think would be the easiest, okay? So this is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my corn tortillas. <laughs> and again, I just put a little bit of uh, olive oil in the, the skillet. Uh, we'll let it come to a little bit and it should, uh, you know, do what tortillas do. You want them, if you want them crispy, you get them crispy. If you want them with a little bit of, uh, you know, fold in them, a little bend, you'll get that too. Got a question? Yeah. Can you buy the coconut aminos in a conventional store? Go to absolutely. Store? Absolutely. You can get the, the coconut aminos in, uh, you can get it in uh, H-E-B, uh, Kroger. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can get it, you can pretty much get it anywhere you go, all right? Um, I don't think, um, it's not one of those hard to find items, all right? Uh, but if you do have trouble uh, finding the items, um, you can reach out to my lovely uh, partner over there, Miss Patina. She's, uh, she'll be taking the uh, pre-orders and doing all those other things that so she can kind of point you in the right direction and show you where you can get some of that stuff. All right, another thing that people kind of don't get or that you feel like you might be missing out on is your sauces, right? Your dressings, right? So this right here is, and look at my, my, my handle is burning a little bit, so y'all don't worry about that smell. Uh, so like the dressing. So this right here is a uh, avocado and cilantro lime um, a crema. Now crema is milk and cheese, but this is not that. I use soy milk. Uh, I use soy milk, a little bit of lime juice, uh, avocados, uh, cilantro, and then I pretty much emulsified it in the blender. And I came out with a nice uh, tangy, but uh, you know, satisfying sauce. We can get that recipe for y'all and we'll have it. Uh, yeah, we can make sure we put, come up with a little pamphlet and some quick, easy recipes that we can shoot out to y'all, okay? All right, so this one right here is ready. And so I'm just gonna plate this up and just pass around so y'all can see how easy it is for you guys to make a quick, Everyone, if we could just hold off on getting samples until after, unless you have to leave, okay? I know people are getting up because you smell it and it smells so good, but let's just wait until after he's done with his presentation. He has enough for all of us. Okay, next question. I just uh, had a question about the... Uh, the coarse salt that you're using? Yes, sir. Is there any chance you can recommend uh, a substitute? Because my issue is hypertension. Mm -hmm. So um, my thing is salt is not everybody's friend, just like you pointed out. And so you don't have to use salt, but it's things that you can substitute in place of salt, like uh, lemon juice, uh, lime juice. Um, it, there are some good seasons out there that, that uh, don't have salt, but those salt-free ingredients also have a lot of preservatives sometimes. They have a lot of extra additives that we really don't need or, or it's not conducive to what we're trying to do. So um, I would suggest uh, like lemon juice. So like if I made a lemon vinaigrette dressing, right, I would just add lemon juice for, uh, I had a, um, a, a customer that, uh, a client that had um, just uh, went through uh, some type of uh, like chemo, right? And so they, he, they had to have a low iodine um, diet. And so I was able to make um, lemon vinaigrette dressings, uh, different toppings and sauces for that person. And I just did no salt at all. And they were able to have a good, delicious meal. And so basically, I mean, it's just a quick situation. But I mean, you know, it's, it's very easy for you to do at home. And this is just mushrooms, mushrooms, onions, bell pepper, um, the sauce. And then I just topped it with a few um, microgreens. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like street tacos, yeah, yeah. Uh, feed my muse. Feed my muse. All right. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we don't do many nuts, but if we do uh, nuts at all, because uh, if more people have uh, nut uh, allergies than they do uh, any other allergies. And so that's one of the things that we pretty much tend to stay away from. And uh, even at our restaurant, we only have maybe one dish that uh, contains nuts. And then uh, if we do any uh, meal uh, preps or any uh, prepackaged meals, we, we try to stay away from nuts. But um, some of them do cause for nuts. Um, so one of the things is um, somebody might struggle with is cheese, right? Cheese. So last night uh, I made a uh, 
a nacho. My wife wanted nachos. And so we are vegan. We've been vegan. I've been vegan for, we've both been vegan for about seven years now. Um, and so once you become vegan, like, uh, you know, some of the things that you kind of miss and, and you feel like you're missing out on is ice cream, uh, cheese, shrimp, crawfish, because we out here in, in Houston. Um, but all those things uh, is, is ways that you can kind of supplement, you know, uh, some of those natural things, not the crawfish or the shrimp, but uh, <laughs> but the, the cheeses, the milks and all of the dairy items. Right. So uh, y'all probably seen that dairy li- that non dairy list was kind of kind of lengthy. Right. So you can find the non dairy products that work best for you and that taste best for you. So with the cheese. So I make a potato cheese. So potato has a lot of starch, right? So potato has a lot of starch. So we use starch, a little bit of oil, water, a little bit of soy milk, and we blend that up. And we blend it up, and and it actually comes out just like stringy queso from the starch that's in the potato. And so we use that. And so if we don't want starch, because sometimes starch, too much starch, too much of anything is bad for you, right? Um, So we do uh, all things in moderation. So uh, when we we don't want any starch or any uh, other types of uh, alternative cheese, we'll do a cashew cheese. So cashew cheese, you just soak your cashews uh, or you can boil them to to get it quickly, get it done quickly, blend them up. Uh, You blend them up with smoked paprika, chili powder, cumin, everything that you think of when you think of uh, a queso or Mexican queso, right? So the thing about it is um, to make this a little more easier, if you want Mexican, you think Mexican and you season Mexican, right? So you you put your your heavy um, peppers and your heavy um, spices in there, your um, you know all, all of the things that make you that give you that those uh, Mexican flavors or Tex-Mex flavors. Um, and so with that cashew cheese, I mean, when I tell you it tastes like cheese, you know, like you're not missing anything. So we don't add any sugar. The uh, cashews already have a little bit of sugar and sweetness in them themselves just naturally. Um, so you don't have to worry about the sugar additives uh, or anything else. But again, you control what you put in that in that cheese or you control what you put in that dish because it's what you have in front of you. All right. Uh, any other questions? Here's one. Okay, one. Um, I have a question about the cashew mm-hmm. cheese or butter. How do you um, do you have a recipe for it? First of all, um, we don't have a recipe documented, but of course we can we can make one. OK. And the next question really doesn't have much to do with recipes, but I wanted to find out. I was rooting for you on Alex versus America. I wanted, so wanted to know what was your time like on there on that uh, show? Oh, man. So uh, that was a, a, a really cool experience, man, just to be able. So I grew up. I learned how to cook off Food Network, uh, watching Chopped. You know, uh, when my first year of marriage, my wife made me a chop basket that was so horrible uh, for me. And she was like, no, 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 it's supposed to be bad. You know, I'm just like, no, nah, man, like I need something better. But um, I grew up watching chop. Um, like I said, I learned how to cook off Food Network and watching uh, chef uh, Alex Garnicelli, uh, who was an iron chef, uh, just, you know, chop people down on the show and also uh, compete at the level that she competed on in, in her career. It was amazing for me to sit, stand there and go toe to toe with just cooking vegetable uh, dishes, you know, uh, and to come up with the um, I did the uh, the uh, line, the fillet of lion's mane, so it was like a, a, a fillet mignon uh, and a, the char broccolini, all those things. Like just to, to sit there and like, have those dishes like go up against her dishes was amazing. So I had a great time doing it, uh, and she felt like I, I beat her too. So by the way, <laughs> all right, she had this one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Regarding the cheese, you mentioned cashew cheese. Mm-hmm. And when I've used vegan cheeses in the past, mm-hmm. I found that they don't melt. So I don't buy vegan cheese because it doesn't melt. Mm-hmm. So can you recommend, uh, you mentioned the cashew cheese, is that a particular cheese that melts? So uh, vegan, the vegan uh, movement in terms of products uh, have gotten a lot better. So there are some that, that melt now. I used to... Um, diet cheese that was one of the things that she said do not eat right uh but we'll just talk about it briefly but for the record do not eat it for this uh during this fast all right uh but the diet cheese has uh has gone from not melting at all to gradually you know doing what it's supposed to do in terms of cheese and so i think what it is is they started using uh better ingredients uh and a few more natural ingredients like uh the potato starch uh, that you find in that in that uh, cheese, and so that, that again, that starch from that potato, it just breaks down. And also using um, uh, coconut oil, so that coconut oil also lets the food kind of like uh, melt, have a melting effect. Okay, uh, but again, you can make your cashew cheese, and you don't have to go and buy the diet cheese. Okay, uh, and then melting, don't worry about melting. We got some stuff that'll melt for you. 
right. Any other questions? Can you repeat one more time the ingredients in the potato cheese? So the potato cheese, though, is uh, boiled potatoes, um, uh, olive oil. Uh, um, you can use almond milk or soy milk. I use soy milk. A uh, little bit of vinegar because, again, with cheese and when you when you try to, like, recreate or, like, make these dishes, cheese has a certain sharpness or sourness that you want. And some people miss that mark. So they end up, if they say, oh, we got vegan cheese that they made at home, and it just tastes real flat. So my thing is uh, just trying to find all of the, the notes, you know, in the food and that make the food what you what it used to be, right? So the vinegar that gives it just a little bit of cut for like a sharp cheddar feel, um, and then also turmeric for the color, smoked paprika, so you can have another layer of flavor, um, and it also adds uh, helps with the color too. So then uh, it, it comes from being like a pale white potato to being like a nice silky orange. Thank you. Last question: Do you? Oh yeah, the recipe is on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So that leads to my next question. Do you already have a cookbook or one coming out? Uh, so um, I have some stuff that I'm working on. Um, I have a, a children's cookbook that I'm actually working on. Um, it's called Chase the Chef and it's with my, uh, my son, Licky over there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Chase the Chef, uh, you know, his, his name is Chase and he also used to chase me around the kitchen uh, when I cook. And he always want to step up and help and, you know, do all these things. And so the cookbook uh, talks about kitchen safety, uh, how to be a good listener and so on and so forth. But the recipes in that uh, cookbook are also very simple and very uh, good. And you can do it without kids. So you're good. All right. Um, also, uh, we have a uh, so we, we're doing a Daniel Fast menu for you guys. So just to kind of help add, uh, I know uh, Andrea said you, you want to make sure you plan. Right. And so planning is very important. So we want to be able to kind of help alleviate some of the, the thinking for you guys. And so uh, I think we shot it over there. It might come up on the screen, but if it doesn't. Uh, so we already kind of planned out the first two weeks of uh, worth of menus that we will do. And we also have some standing uh, menu items that we'll keep uh, in rotation uh, throughout the Daniels Fast. So the first week of uh, January, we'll do like uh, chili beans with, uh, there we go. So chili beans with brown rice. And again, Whatever we want the food to taste like, we can make it taste like that, okay? Uh, so you don't have to be uh, nervous about the texture or the taste or anything like that, especially dealing with me, all right? Uh, we'll do um, fettuccine Alfredo um, pasta. Again, we'll do that with a potato cheese. Uh, so we'll make sure all of the, it's uh, Daniel Fast friendly. Uh, we'll do a potato lentil curry stew, which is amazing. Uh, then we do a st uh, stew tomato okra, and everybody knows stew tomato okra. It ain't stew tomato okra unless I put what sausage and shrimp in it. Don't worry about that. We'll make sure we take care of that. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we'll do a cherry tomato compote pasta. And um, when she was talking about the, the different jarred pastas, um, it's cool, but sometimes you got to read those labels because those labels will trick you and you'll be thinking you're getting something healthy or good or on, on par with your diet. And then it's, it's actually full of sugar, full of preservatives and things that are, are harmful to you um, just in life and also uh, detrimental to uh, going doing the adverse effects of the Danes fast. Okay? Uh, so um, you can simply take tomatoes. Uh, I like to use vine tomatoes. If it's on the vine, still attached, you can smell it. It smells different from like just regular steak tomatoes, right? So uh, vine tomatoes are sweet cherry tomatoes. It's already naturally have a lot of flavor and aroma. Cook those down in just a little bit of olive oil, add a little bit of water, cook it down a little bit more, add some basil, and I guarantee you that will be the best tomato sauce that you ever made on your own. And it's just those just very simple ingredients. Let it cook down, let it caramelize in that skillet a little bit. And the flavors that you'll build from the herbs and from those uh, vine tomatoes or those little cherry tomatoes will be amazing. OK, um, we also have uh, salads that we'll keep on hand uh, throughout the entire um, day and fast. So av avocado ranch house salad, uh, the smoky kale salad with a lemon vin. Uh, and then we also do um, overnight oats. Uh, so if you want to grab a jar of something like real quick and eat that, so we just take the oats, we uh, soak them in uh, almond milk, uh, oat milk. Uh, we may put some strawberries in there, some bananas, and the natural sweetness from the uh, the, the fruit will just soak in there and seep down. And so you won't be missing out on breakfast, especially like those little uh, oatmeal packets full of sugar, full of all kind of stuff that you know you don't you're not even you don't even know. Um, and then also a chia seed pudding, again, with berries, all fresh fruit. When you add that stuff in there, it brings another layer to your food, and it gives you something that you didn't think you can have uh, if you were not on this type of diet. Okay. Thanks.
Sure. 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 Uh, so again, for this dish that we did today, so we had the smoked paprika, uh, we had the uh, cumin, just a little bit of kosher salt, and coconut aminos, and we use the oyster mushrooms. Again, just for y'all to see that again. And so um, the oyster mushrooms, sometimes they look a little, if you go to Whole Foods, don't get these at Whole Foods because they're going to charge your arm and a leg for it. And it's not even going to be enough uh, for you to actually like make a meal out of, okay? Um, talk to Miss Bettina and she'll be able to get y'all set up if there's something that y'all want to do. But uh, I'll tell you, don't go to Whole Foods because it's like eleven ninety nine for just a little small, you know, like a um, little box, all right? And it's just not enough for you to feed yourself, let alone uh, maybe you and another person, all right? Um, and again, uh, somebody said something about children, uh, like doing it any fast with kids. Um, so they, there are some good products out there um, that the kids don't necessarily be have necessarily have to be as hardcore as you. Um, so you can get them like a, a vegan nugget. You know, it's some some real decent um, products out there. Um, but again, read the labels. Uh, and don't be tempted to eat that as your, uh, you know, sample. Uh, but if you want to, you know, keep your household, you know, on the same track so that they f still feel like they're getting what they used to, it'll just be a modified version just for the for the kiddos. Uh, we don't buy meat in our house, um, but my son Chase swears he's not vegan. He just said he's a vegan customer. Uh, and, you know, he can't wait to get to his granny's house so he can ask for anything that she has in the refrigerator. Um, but Kai is two years old and he's uh, completely vegan. My wife was 100% vegan when she uh, gave birth to him. And the difference from when she gave birth to the first baby, uh, to Chase being not vegan, and then Kai being 100% vegan was night and day. Um, uh, and not saying that, you know, that to get you to turn, but it's, it's benefits to it. You know, uh, if you eat this way, uh, you'll notice your skin, you know, uh, uh, will begin to clear up if you have any uh, any discoloration or, or any uh, acne. You'll have a, especially have a clearer mind just from uh, eating clean and also being edified by the word uh, during a Daniel fast. Um, all of these different things, uh, you know, you'll start to notice things that change, okay? Um, and if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to us, um, you know, uh, go ahead via social media, anything else. So I know you didn't really mention jackfruit. Um, it, do you have any tips and tricks for how to use it? Because I know it's a complicated fruit meat dish. Yeah, yeah. so jackfruit, um, you can treat it just like any other meat substitute um jackfruit is a it's a, a, a huge fruit um i don't know if any of you guys seen it before but the texture and what when it when it's ripe it tastes like a juicy fruit juicy fruit bubblegum and so that's really where they got the flavor profile for juicy fruit was from that jackfruit uh fruit right the ripe fruit uh and when it's ripe it's yellow and it's yellow pods that are very very sweet uh it has a natural um uh, latex in it so it's very like sticky um, but to buy it in a can, I think is d definitely okay. It's uh, it'll be a young jackfruit, and it'll be in like uh, water and brine. And you can just break it up. It's fibrous. It breaks up just like uh, some meat would break up or pork. And you can cook it just like you would any other type of meat, and season it the same way. And you can use your coconut aminos or any other seasoning to get that flavor you want. And I got one more question, and then that'll be my time. I, one more? Okay, go ahead. For the meals that you have listed up on the screen. Um, I'm looking on the website. I didn't see any prices. Is is that also going to be listed? The prices will be listed. Uh, and then you can talk to Ms. Bettina once you uh, go over there to the table and she'll answer any other questions for you. But they will be very affordable. Um, but I don't want to miss quotes. So I don't see them up there. <laughs> All right. So once again, thank you all so much for allowing me to do this. Thank you. all Thank you. all Hmm? Oh, just before you leave, just before you leave, is Danielle DeVore here? Felicia Carrington? Patrice Henry? Angela Wilborn? Uniqua Triplett? Belinda Simples? Burnett Walker? Nija Johnson? What up, ma'am? Audrey Grimmett, Simone Davis, Ashley Knox, Michelle Robinson, Ketcha Simmons, Shatoya Carter, Melvin Wells, 
Lisa Porter, Erica Watson, Shanisha Smith, Courtney Goss, Alicia Lee, Cassie Simmons, Pamela Staggers, Connie Parks, Carol Elaine, Teresa Wade, Sadako Gray, Janice Boone, Annie Jenkins, John Foster. If you all are here, please come on up. The church would like to bless you with a $100 gift card to Walmart to get you started on your Daniel Fast journey. Don't hug me, hug pastor. <laughs> Is Tanya Lawson here? Carolyn Gabriel? Yeah, you got to be here to win. Roger Boykins? Okay. Misty Ribon? No? Uh, it's something else. Okay. All right. Latasha Payne? And Gwinnetta Tanksley? Ms. Tanksley, you are being gifted with all of these wonderful foods that we purchased today. <laughs> Just see me right after, and I'll bag them all up for you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Just come back and see me right afterward, okay? And then um, for all of you, for everyone joining us online, you will get an email. If you were are being gifted with a Walmart gift card, your names were put into a drawing, and so you will receive an email if you um, are a person that will be gifted a gift card. Lastly, Chef Lindsay was gracious enough to give, to donate 15, um, 15 gift cards to join him at his restaurant. And so you will get an email if you are one of those 15 persons that will be um, invited to um, have lunch on him, okay? Any other questions as we wrap up? Yes, sir. Do a separate meeting uh, so that you guys can come in. You can have meetings after the day, Friday. So, uh, just be on the lookout for it for y'all. Uh, at Mogul Group, um, HTX. We'll have those uh, items listed, have them listed, uh, so that you guys can see it. Uh, mainly we'll do tacos. Uh, because uh, people don't want to come do Taco Tuesday with their friends, you can do that, but it'll be dang fast friendly, okay? All right. And lastly, is there a Miss Lauder Milk here? You are taking home all of the Daniel Fast major brand foods. <laughs> Do not forget to stop by the mushroom table if you would like to buy some of those lion's mane mushrooms and oyster mushrooms. They, they are available for sale today. And everyone will have an opportunity to sample both of the dishes that Chef made as soon as we dismiss. Dr. Barnett, Atequafio. <laughs> Y'all, let's give it up for Miss Andrea Tucker. And we had, I thought I saw Joseph here. He's not here, but we have a great, great, great uh, creative arts, creative director and communications ministry. So those of you on Zoom, thank you for joining us. And for all the crew that was here this morning, thank you for being with us to help us make sure that we could hear and see everything.
Amen. For those who are on Zoom, if you missed it, that uh, Chef just said that there's a specific menu that will be at Mo Better Brews for you to take advantage of. So if you go to the restaurant, do not expect Daniel Fast Food right now, but when the time comes, you can go and you'll be able to uh, order from that menu. I do want to ask you one more thing. Reverend Dave Roberts um, will be teaching Bible study and helping us along and making sure that we're Minister Christian Education, wave your hand for those of you who haven't seen. No, yeah. And if you could put up one of those slides I had in the presentation, just anyone, wanted to make sure you all remember that everything has been intentional to help you be successful and get the most out of this experience. So from your spiritual diet to the actual natural things and the uh, rest, you got a whole restaurant catering to y'all. Y'all bless. Y'all. All of this is trying to help you be successful, but most importantly, to grow closer to God and to have a very, very powerful life experience that will put you in a whole different space to be um, that dedicated disciple. So remember that uh, YouTube, there'll be also some um, segments during January as well. So if you want to subscribe, you can get uh, more information on the YouTube channel. Yeah, you had it right there. All right. We ready to pray and then go eat. Oh, and thank you so much. Next Sunday or the Sunday after? Christmas, Christmas, that's going to be your gift. We're going to have a whole Daniel Fast guide. So all this will be online, plus there will be something literally tangible that you can hold on to. We want you to put things, we will put things online for those of you who know how to get it and all of that. But if you want something in hand that you want to keep with you, we'll have it there as well. So you will get that on Christmas. It'll be published. And additionally, this year, we uh, took the time to consult with one of our Wheeler Avenue physicians, and he has made some suggestions for persons that are in impacted and affected with diabetes. We want to make sure that even those persons that have diabetes are still able to join us on this Daniel Fast journey. So that guide will also be included in that, in that, in that booklet. Aren't you grateful for leadership that thinks about your well-being, spiritually, physically, all of that? Uh, say, hey, Reverend Johnson. Thank you so much uh, to all the leadership. Are we ready to pray and then? Yeah, oh, she said yes. Okay, she hungry. She, she hungry. Chef, thank you so much. For, for coming out, uh, Chef. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Chef Lindsay, for coming out. Thank you. Can I have these right here? Okay, let's pray. We good? <laughs> God, how we bless you. How we thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you, just, that, just because of who you are and that you draw us into relationship, that you provided everything we need for life and living through Jesus Christ. Thank you for this season to remember his coming, but also his, his, his full life, Lord, and what he did to save us, to restore us. And even now, Lord, as we prepare our minds, our hearts, our appetites, our budgets, our diets, everything about our lifestyle so that we will not just take it as a season to fast and draw closer to you, but it becomes a lifestyle, way of life that we remember we have the privilege to call on your name at any time, any place, for any reason. But Lord, in this, this experience we will have together as a church family, we trust that you will give us meaning and purpose, that you will meet with us, that you will download into our hearts some specific instruction and guidance and wisdom and increase our time of prayer and make it more intimate. Give us new revelation and insight into your word. Give us a refreshed joy and excitement about just being a part of your family. Show us who to connect with in our friendship circle, our accountability circle. Lord, show us how to navigate all the different spaces and places that we will need your guidance and your grace. No condemnation. We, we trust for your grace, God. We trust you for grace. And because we set our hearts, we purpose in our hearts, because we set our minds to honor you and humble ourselves in your presence, we also take you at your word. God, I'm asking you, right now in the name of Jesus to give us not only the grace to embark and to complete the Daniel fast, but I'm asking you for Daniel kind of results. 
I'm asking you for the kind of results that Daniel had and the favor that was on his life and his friends. God, I'm asking you to make our countenance brighter and, and more glorious than any other. God, show up in some spaces where we don't have money to change it, but we got your favor and your grace, God. You set us up in some special situations because somebody's going to be praying about the job and the family and the marriage and the finances and the health, but God, do something extraordinary. We want Daniel kind of results. We want to change in our church, in our community, even our nation. God, you can do so much. with If you just do it with the people in this room, if you just visit us and show us how to, to believe you for greater things and, and, and expect from you, oh God, a turn in the atmosphere, God, to do some spiritual warfare in the, in the systems of our nation, in our world even. God, we're asking you for the Daniel-like results. Oh, God, my God, my God, remind us of these things where we get a little tempted or get a little weak, that we have purpose to draw near to you and be the people of God that you've called us to be. Really, it is for such a time as this. Oh, how we bless you and thank you, Lord, that we are in community, we are with one another, and we, we just believe you for great things. So would you prepare our hearts and our minds again? And even as we celebrate over Christmas and New Year, Lord, we know we we have, a, we have a mission. We have a focus. And we trust you, Lord God, to see us through it. Now bless us even as we go our separate ways from this place and uh, continue to do your work in our hearts and our lives. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. Amen. Oh, hold on everybody. On behalf of every one of us who attended this meeting, let's give them a round of applause. This was wonderful. Thank you very, very much. No, it was wonderful. Thank you. Johnson. Congratulations. trying to take pictures. Hi. Ooh, that's a pretty song. Oh. You need me? No, I want these for real. Oh, I know, right? Huh? That's right. Yeah, yeah.